Hello and welcome to the Race Tech Euro V8 Supercar Series live on Apex Racing TV. My name is Sam Fitzpatrick and alongside me for today's racing is Marco Barbanier. And we're here at the classic Bathurst circuit. Marco, this one is a crown jewel of this series. It's the one everyone wants to win. Let's see who is going to take it in today's 90 minute race. Absolutely, Sam. Absolutely, this is going to be a fantastic one. Hello to you and hello to everyone else watching. Us. Apologies for the delay. Uh, uh, YouTube not playing nicely uh, with us uh, uh, right now, but uh, we are absolutely 100% live. And yeah, welcome uh, to this most important broadcast. I, I think that, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, one of those that uh, really, really, really... Uh, everyone wants to win and i think uh i think it's going to be a fantastic race sam absolutely so we're pretty much in the uh, mid parts of this uh, season eight at the moment at the head of the championship is george mcclay but by a very small margin nicole foggy very much up there johnny branson after a poor start to the season recovering um but he really needs a exceptional end to the season to bring him back into contention chris jackson and richard warringham in a fourth and fifth uh, in the amateur class by the way steve lavelli with a handy advantage at the moment uh, so uh, keep an eye out on those drivers but yeah still a few more rounds for the, those standings to change um currently we are in this qualifying session in fact actually we are just finishing this qualifying session so i believe we will soon uh, be uh, going to the grid as uh, the majority of the qualifying times have already been set and one man who was very much the favorite going into this meeting has uh, seemingly taken the honors uh, straight away off the bats here marco uh, nico foggy we know that we like we we know that he likes this circuit nurburgring he was ever so strong at as well and four tenths to a second in qualifying that is a uh, a useful advantage Absolutely, it is. Uh, you know, it's uh, uh, no secret that he is, he is uh, the big favorite probably around here today. Uh, as you said, uh, dominating the event in, uh, in at the North Life. I think that, uh, you know, uh, we have some new names, of course. Uh, well, some old names because it's nice to have, uh, for example, Michael Taliancic around here. Uh, so who knows but uh, looks like uh, as you were predicting uh, tony klusterman also being very very competitive for this one yeah i remember the last time we had an enduro round this circuit klusterman was actually really strong he hit the wall on the first that like skimmed it caused a little bit of damage lost the lead because of it and then after that he was pretty much max uh, matching foggy's time so he did go on to win that race i believe that was season six um if i got that one right maybe even season five um since then i think we've had uh usually uh feature and sprints around this uh around this track this is the one track in the year of the eight schedule which is in every single season so these drivers really do have a lot of experience around here sparkles the first year with this new generation of cars and so the grid is starting to form up and we can go through your grid. So it's Nicole Foggy on pole position by four tenths of a second. Look how close it is though between Klusman, Brandon and McClare. Of course, McClare, championship leader, doesn't want to lose too many points to Nicole Foggy after a little bit of a struggling race to at Barcelona last time out. Chris Jackson lines up in fifth. Certainly watch out for him. Marco Namella, good to see him there in sixth. Once again, good pace for him. Uh, Jane McKnight starts in seventh. There's Michael Taliancic. I mean, the master of strategy and being ever so quick in the AOSC Super Series, uh, in, which runs the same cars, of course, uh, was very strong on uh, on Friday, actually. Uh, he is one of the favourites uh, for this race, undoubtedly, despite being a bit off the pace in qualifying. Richard Warmingham and Hal Sadler round out the top 10. There's Wayne Sanson. Greg Carr is top of the club drivers after a little bit of a struggling season. Shannon Payne, 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 Plenty of pace has uh, Car, but uh, up there in 12th place. There's championship leader Steve Lavelli in 13th. There's Tyler Newitt, Richard Alsop, Jamie Wilson. Good to see him back. Anthony Woodward, Lane O'Connor, uh, Nikolai Bogatayev, Jamie Jeffrey on his debut. And then the drivers who did not set times, Victor Tanaka, Sam Buzan, Dominic Sori, Peter Bingham. 
along with Clyde Whiting, Andrew Hoffman, Bill Switzer, Joshua Chin and Michael Frost. Marco, that is a lot of drives not setting times. Do we think that's just because of uh, the difficulty of getting a clean lap around this place? Uh, it might be, or uh, might be a decision strategy-wise, even though I have to say, say that uh, it's not... Uh, congratulations to the cameraman, by the way. Um, oh, get, stop, <laughs> stop it, Mark. Okay, come on. I mean, the... not even started the race yet. <laughs> Look at that barrier. You want to see anything else? <laughs> want to see the cars? Now nah, you're seeing the barrier, mate, all right? I mean... That's a nice camera, isn't it? Stop this complaining. Is a, this is a very nice camera. Uh, I, I agree with you. So, here we go. Cars are rolling. It's going to be a great one. As the new rules that we had... Oh, now we have a brick wall. Okay. Um, the new rules uh, that we've had for quite a bit now, Enduro event, means rolling start. Yep, and it's probably the wise decision. We can have pilots around this place at Bathurst. However, you'd hope that the experience of these drivers will see us through safely for these first couple of laps. So the pace car comes into the pits. We are about to get 90 minutes of racing underway. It's Foggy from the pole. Klusterman alongside. What can Brandon do from third? The green flag is out. And we're away racing at Bathurst. Great start for Foggy. Pulls away from the rest of the field. Can Brandon get past Klusterman going into turn one? Klusterman's going to have to leave room for his rival. He just about leaves enough room. But not a whole lot more than that. The two two-time defending champions going at it. Uh, McClay stays in fourth place. Great start for Taliancic and Stadler. Poor start for McKnight and Warmingham, though, but Stadler up three places already from 10. Uh, he was very strong on the starts at Barcelona and he certainly re re replicated that today. Taliancic oh, oh, trying no! to go for another move. Oh, as there's a spin now, and that was Taliancic trying to go for the move. I think maybe Stadler was involved in that one, trying to take evasive action. Fortunately, they were on the side of the circuit. Still two, three wide into the cutting. As we start to ascend the mountain, this is where the guys we really need to get into single file. And that does seem to have taken place. I think uh, there was contact there and unfortunately the NQR car that spun was collected by another NQR car who was spinning. It was Jackson and Carr. And, and Nomella got involved in that one as well, which I'm not yeah. quite sure how he did. Um, I guess he went to the outside, did Nomella? which uh, turned out to be costly. So Carr, leader of the uh, club drivers on the grid, needed to make up some points on Steve Lavelli in this race. He's got a long way to come back now. You know, Sam, I'm not quite sure because I think Carr started from the pizza. Really? Oh, maybe. Yeah, you could be right. Could be right. Let's get a replay from the chopper and see what we see from uh, I So this is Taliancic going down the inside of Jackson. A little bit of netcode. Aussie connection. Now, who's that on the outside? Was that Nomella? I guess that, that was Nomella. No, that was... Uh, uh, Nomella is uh, racing for ra ra Racecraft, so... We will know from here. If you can see the car number... Okay, it's, it's an Australian car. Let's see from the rear wing. Oh dear! Oh dear! It's Bill Switzer is that Jackson and... again? It is Chris Jackson and Bill Switzer, absolutely. Straight what to are... the pits for Jackson. So it was McKnight then. Aha, there you go. Figured that out. I uh, do get a faster pair to these drivers, so uh, that instant for, for Switzer and uh, Jackson. Uh, heading straight to the pits was Jackson, so they will uh, quickly uh, get a new car. Out in the lead, meanwhile, it's pretty close amongst the top four. Brandon, if, anyone, if anything, the one who is holding these guys, uh, or, or holding McClay up. I remember, McClay, if he loses to Foggy today, he will lose the championship lead for pretty much the first time this season. Been ever so strong ever since Monza. Foggy, to be fair, won the first race of the season, so I guess he uh, led after that, but at least at the end of each meeting. McClay was uh, opening up the gap at the start of the season. However, it has started to come down in recent rounds. So he really does want to get past Brandon nice and quick if there is possibly a way past that, uh, that Ford machine. 
Oh, Anderson. that's Sanderson. Yeah, nice pass. And, um, you know, now we have Newitt a little bit, uh, sorry, Wormingham, a little bit off the line. Uh, here comes Newitt uh, on the outside, his teammate. And uh, behind them is uh, Jamie Wilson. There's a little bit of contact there. It almost turns into a disaster. And still the two XVR boys go and get it. And, and Lavelli uh, nips through down the inside of the pair. Them nice move there from Lavelli. He's uh, had a had an exceptional season so far. Going to come back then is Newitz, maybe. Yeah, he, he wasn't very happy, as you would imagine by his flashing of the headlights. And uh, let's talk about this chicane because uh, it is so difficult to get it right, Sam. He, he, even the even the chicanes are tough in this racetrack. The elevation change there is absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, oh, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> did you see that, man? That was awesome. That was either new it uh, onto wheels, uh, not getting the best exit, and Wilson uh, is uh, looking ready to, to pounce. Let's jump on board with him once again. So, not much of a slipstream effect in these cars. Wilson's been uh, held up for a little while now would quite like to move past here he goes into turn two that's deep on the brakes but there's a bit of camber at that corner and does uh, suck you into the uh, to the inside and you should be all right now going around the outside at the cutting so uh, i can see the team chimera driver out there today quite a queue behind these drivers though all going all the way back to jamie mcknight at the rear of this field or rear of this pack and uh, he's certainly going to be interested in making his way up. They have damage though on that car. Yeah, involved in a couple of collisions, of course. As Wilson leading this uh, this pack, going a bit wide there, at, uh, I think at, at Skyline, but uh, keeping his car on track at the front. As you can see, the situation as oh Bingham, Bingham with an issue. Uh, see, Skyline, hard braking there. Oh, is he taking too much grass? Can he get stopped? Probably the most common mistake, I would say, around this circuit. And that's going to be a bit of steering damage, I imagine. By the way, Jamie Jeffrey, rookie, 2.5 with the 1350i rating. So, I mean, a rookie in the true sense of the word. Hasn't done a single official race on the road. What a way to debut. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't know it, would you? I mean, he's doing pretty <laughs> well. He got a bit of experience on uh, other simulators. I trust that he's not a real-life driver. I think two real-life drivers have switched to iRacing very recently. Now, McClay, closer than ever to Brandon. Got to be so careful over the crest. We don't want to be steering whatsoever. You want to be dead straight over that hill. And they're now four seconds off the race lead. This is unusual to see from Johnny Brandon. If uh, if it was just Foggy pulling away, then you could maybe understand that. We know how good Foggy is around this track. One here in our World GT, of course, and on several occasions in this series. Um, and Brandon doesn't particularly like this place, as far as I'm aware. I think he crashed here in... Uh, well, I think it was your first ever race, actually, broadcasting for Apex Racing TV, Mark. I think he hit the wall in race one. This was when he was fighting for the championship with uh, Michael Abdotka back in season four. Um, so he doesn't have a great record here as, as Johnny. I have, uh, uh, you know, I was thinking today, I mean, it's been two years uh, to the date almost uh, for that, since that broadcaster. As, oh, 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 traffic, traffic, traffic. Uh, and the gap goes down in a hurry between uh, Foggy and Klusterman. But yeah, I mean, a lot of a uh, lot of time has passed, so I don't remember that particular. Uh, I will never forget your uh, disconnection in the middle of the race, <laughs> because that I think is what gave me this job. Throwing you in the deep end, eh? Absolutely. Uh, Foggy managed to repel that attack but uh Klusman doesn't really have a he's very binary is uh is Klusman. so it's either on or off um most likely on he, he doesn't really have like a 60 percent or a 70 percent it, it's it's a hundred or zero pretty much for uh for Klusman. 
And so uh, expect him to uh, be uh, hounding the rear end of, uh, of Foggy, but he uh, needs to make sure that he doesn't put it in the wall. Off track for Jamie Jeffrey. Now, he did see him make a bit of contact at this corner a couple of laps ago. And this is with uh, Woodward, I think, who also went off the circuit. Yeah, I think it was a case of synchronized spinning or, you know, synchronized off track and almost collecting both Ooh. the tire up there. By the way, this is my new camera. I mean, better than the helmet camera that you did for the Porsche. Uh, uh, sorry, for the TCR and the Porsche. Ap apologies. Uh, I mean, some of these are, are a bit glitchy, I must say. We'll have to iron them out. As Chris Jackson is in our race chat, that means that unfortunately he has thrown in the towel for this event. Very early in, but of course uh, he has been uh, uh, involved straight away in a couple of collisions. Also, one thing that we said earlier, of course, yes, there is a faster pair for these guys, but uh, it's uh, a matter of, you know, trying to avoid using it because it can put you wildly off strategy. And one more stop around here, it's, uh, you know, a guarantee of a, you know, a, ba a bad result. It's, uh, if you want to stop, uh, uh, you know, the least uh, possible uh, in, in pit road. As on the back stretch once again, they go down Conrad, Stadler, Sanderson and Warmingham. They are all contending with the lapped car of Bill Switzer involved in the collision in the final corner. Oh, look at Sanderson there with a fantastic move in the chase sideways. Warmingham goes for the move. Nonetheless, positions don't change, but that was some very high octane, high risk racing uh, for these drivers. Really was, and overtakes around this place. Whilst there are a few opportunities, of course, down into turn one, turn two, and uh, also these last couple of corners as well. That that's never easy around this circuit with the narrowness of the uh, of the track, and especially going into the chase, how uh, how on edge the car is with the uh, right-handed kink just prior. That is uh, Marco Namella. Gaining a place there, past um, uh, that was Whiting? Uh, Clyde Whiting. Yeah, yeah. and so Alsop well, just the passed McKnight. Alsop just passed McKnight, and McKnight is not happy. Push him a bit wide, and you can see the headlights uh, will come on. Uh, speaking of headlights, uh, let's uh, have a nice weather report. As you can see, it's a. Uh, the 15th of November, of course, because we are on the in the southern hemisphere. Of course. And it is. No, I th wait. That still doesn't make sense to me. What? Oh, yeah, because it's May the 15th. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Sorry. And, <laughs> Taking me a year to realise that. As you can see, it is uh, quite late. Uh, remember, we had the beautiful finish under the headlights last year. Uh, in the in the double header that went a bit too long, <laughs> if you remember the last time <laughs> we went here, and that's the reason why we are running uh, time raced uh, now. Time races now. <laughs> we went a bit too long. Uh, I enjoyed every second of the double header, where the ra where race two was basically a mini enduro. Uh, it went so long that uh, Lee Thompson asked, uh, said in the in, in our private chat, uh, guys, you forgot to turn off the stream for the Euro V8s. Uh, said no, <laughs> still going. <laughs> This was 45 minutes after it was due to end. Um, so, uh, what was, uh, yeah, long race that. Bring, bring all, have that every round, honestly. I mean, more, more, more the merrier, I say. Yeah. I, mean, I remember, remember after the race, I talked to Clyde and said, uh, that was a fantastic decision to have this mini enduro ending under the, with the headlights on. And, you know, the first thing he said, that was a mistake. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was a, a beautiful mistake, in my opinion. Went a bit too long, but you know, I mean, uh, that's why, what we are here for. As this fight continues between Brandon and McClay, but now, as you can see, top two have checked out, and Foggy, after that little bit of a scare, has pulled away once again from Kusterman. Look at McClay, he's trying to find a way past Johnny Brandon, and no dice this time. A bit of, you know, cloud cover in the sky as. Uh, this trio here, Stadler, Sanderson and Warmingham are also going at it, and behind them it's Wilson trying to pass Lavelli. Yeah, and Wilson getting past Lavelli there. Yeah, it was three tenths of a second faster on that last lap. 
got close enough and then passing into turn two on this lap. So nice job there from Jamie Wilson making some good progress up through the order. Next behind Lavelli is Newitt. Because I think Lavelli got past the pair of these guys when they collided uh, earlier on. That's why he uh, was ahead, but now Sandwich in the middle of them. Uh, a little bit strange what's going on with Michael Taliancic currently. Anyone who saw the AOSC Super Series, which would have been on Apex Racing TV the other day, along with uh, uh, along with the, the iRacing Esports Network as well, I believe he finished in second place for Pursuit Sim Racing. Um, it was a really good drive from him and his teammate, whose name evades me. Uh, and I mean, second place in that field was incredible. That was at ba uh, Barcelona. Got a little bit lucky with a late safety car. Um, so he is literally one of the best drivers in this car. I mean, no disrespect to everyone else out here. But it is a bit surprising that he's now 12 seconds off the lead. Just wonder if he's, if he's going for a, a mega strategy. Clyde Whitesing uh, did, uh, did post in the uh, iRacing chat earlier on when he saw that uh, Taliantrich was, was in this race. So he's going to go for a zero stop. Um, which is uh, a little bit extreme considering that it is a 90 minute race. But that's the type of thing that Tali Anchich usually does. Uh, he can really make the uh, fuel last. So let's see if he's maybe conjuring something special here. Two minute 5.7 on that last lap. Another nine tenths of a second lost to the race leader. Uh, and a little bit by himself currently in fifth position. Um, do you think he's trying something here, Marco? Or is this just his ultimate pace? It's either that or, uh, or uh, you know, a lack of coffee, because I don't know exactly where he is from, uh, from Australia, but it could be anywhere for, from 4.21 in the morning in Canberra to 3.51 in Adelaide or 2.21 in Perth. So it's a big sacrifice that these guys are doing uh, from Down Under racing in this series. This is the reason why Michael doesn't race often. Uh, but yeah, uh, let, let, let's see, because he is a very quick driver, you're absolutely right. Um, and when he races, uh, we only ha we all always have uh, the possibility of a surprise. So keep an eye open for him, as Durmela goes past Bogatayev, so we can go back and see what happened to Marco at the start of the race. Ah, he started from the pits, perfect. He did start from the pits, yeah. A very clean car. I say that, I just saw his door. Maybe not quite so clean. There is a 93 of uh, Bill Switzer. And he has gone back to the oh, pits. Oh, oh, dear. Oh, oh, dear. That was with Buzan. And Buzan with a bit of damage now. He was in 23rd place, was Buzan before this. He well, it's kind of Buzan's fault. Yeah. I do love the grill on that car. Great livery. I always say this, and I, I feel like it's getting a bit old now. Um, nearly three years of commentating, and, and it's pretty much my one thing where I say, if you're behind someone for a while, then you can sketch oh, Donnie, the rear end. Donnie's oh, wide. dear. He's all right. He's Turn one there. is one of the few corners where there isn't a wall on the outside of the circuit, but that is a couple of seconds lost for Klusman. Just shows how hard he was pushing. you were saying? Oh, I was saying how um, my one saying, which I'll probably stolen off of someone anyway, it's the fact that you can sketch the back of someone's car if you followed them for a while. And I'm about to use that for McClay, how he could probably sketch the back of that XVR car very, very accurately, um, seeing that he has been staring at it for uh, for this entire race. We got that story a little bit further down as well. Stadler and uh, Sanderson, very close to one another. Um, but... Uh, yeah, a few trains forming at the moment, which uh, you don't necessarily associate with a track with the uh, length of streets that this place does. Certainly around here, pretty much impossible to overtake. Wow, great camera shot there. I mean... It really is, but wait for it because I think it's about there you go. I mean, what's that? What is that? Oh dear. Keep, it, keep on it for a little bit longer. Um, well, I, don't, I don't see what the issue where, with this is. Where did is. you put this cameraman? Uh, underground? Is it like a Super Mario cameraman? Is it like well, I think the problem is it's on like the other end of the circuit. And so, <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. It's too bad because those TV2 cameras are really beautiful up the mountain, but then the moment they start going down the mountain, 
look at the cameraman, uh, I think uh, that cameraman there forgot that he should be working right now. And, uh, it's a nice shot of the, of the barrier. So. Actually, it will be uh, producing a nice car pack for the uh, V8 supercars. Um, in the uh, for, for at least the next round, I feel like uh, seeing that we're broadcasting a couple of series on Apex Racing TV with these uh, with these cars uh, would be uh, would be appropriate. Done some for the uh, GTE cars actually, so check out the Apex Racing League GT Championship on Sunday um, to see that. Not this Sunday, following Sunday. So I'm pretty quick. Oh, that's as close. Woodward and O'Connor. Around the outside goes Woodward, and he uh, gets ahead. Is that just defending there from uh, from Woodward, or was he actually uh, moving past? In fact, he was moving past up into uh, 14th place. Now is the Never Quits Racing driver. Also further ahead, Alsop has got ahead of Newitt. I think they passed and they passed each other in this sequence of corners. A big risk there for the XVR car. And you are absolutely right about Alsop. There he is. Getting past the XR car of Newit. There we go. Incredible chain currently involved with these guys. Look at that. That's uh uh Stadler in sixth is only uh what four seconds ahead of McKnight in thirteenth. Stadler has got a little bit of a reputation for uh, being the front of these trains. His starts so far this season so have been absolutely superb. Barcelona was a great example of that where both races he got uh, brilliant uh, launches. That's something that he's now he's not necessarily the best in qualifying Stadler but um, usually gets himself up at the front and then uh, has a bit of a cue but, uh, after that but uh, punching above his weight perhaps is the uh, TechSense Fit Slime Sport driver. The Austrian of course. As you can see top four Kept their status quo. Everyone else, uh, you know, apart from Warmingham, moving up and down. And once again, in the club championship, uh, we see that uh, Lavelli is on a class of his own, uh, sitting several seconds in front of second and third in class, which are Carr and Whiting. Yeah, need to need a few more amateur drivers, don't we? Uh, or club drivers. Or maybe even three championships. I think that would be really good. Like we have in Simo as well. Gold, silver, bronze. I think uh, that would uh, maybe be appropriate because these cars are so tricky to drive. I was driving the uh, the GT4 car earlier on. And my God, that thing is so easy to drive. Yes, I mean, it's it is remarkable. planted on the racetrack. I mean, it, it's easier to drive than my Citroen C1 on the roads. I mean, I crash oh, in that GT4 car? less. Wait, you have a Citroen C1? No, I have uh, I have the Toyota, but uh, it's the same. I have oh. Diego, it's the same oh, car. we've never discussed this. Two <laughs> years. And we've never found this out. No, it's a brilliant car. <laughs> yeah, can yeah, you yeah. get the uh, changeable dash that where you can change the color of the uh, of the interior of the car? Where you have like the uh, where you have like the detachable panels? I have never tried it. It was uh... oh, okay. A surprise, I mean, uh, from my mom, uh, and uh, she picked the color, and of course, the car couldn't be more red than it is right now. Oh, I've got a red one as well. Like, it's a proper Ferrari red. <laughs> and on the inside as well, it's all red, basically. It's a, it's a lovely little car. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot drive it now, but... Uh, it's, uh, it's very, very nice, and uh, I absolutely love it. They are absolutely superb, aren't they? Uh, unfortunately, my parents want to scrap mine, um, but I, I will try to hang on to it. Uh, and actually, it is worth more in scrap metal than the uh, actual car itself, but uh, well, I try to uh, make it live on. This is getting closer and closer. Sadler, now 13 seconds behind Tajancic. Um, this is uh, very much a divide, a chasm, as Adam Hedgecock would say. And uh, Levey is just getting a little bit closer as well at the back of this. Struggling to keep up, if anything, is a uh, Jay McKnight right at the rear. Uh, Richard Alsop wants to uh, make up a move as well. Shame to see uh, Namelo, of course, a little bit further down the other. He's down in 15th place. Bogotayev, has he had an issue? Bogotayev or O'Connor? They are interchanging oh, a little bit, according to my screen. 
Oh, was uh, yes, yeah, sliding about there was uh, was Alsop. Do the cam non non. Basically, the camera is only the TV two only works for the first half of the lap. So I need to. I think so. I need to remind because. But don't they look good? Some of them shots are absolutely amazing. I mean, look at this as uh, they are going side by side on the back stretch. Look at the cars moving left and right. Uh, O'Connor with an issue, but we will focus on this fight for a second because here comes Warmingham on the inside of Wilson who's sliding wide and wide and wide. Oh, that was very close to disaster for, uh, for And Wilson. here comes now, Alsop as well. Going in two places, I think, is Alsop. Nice work. Up into eighth place now. So uh, Wilson, and now Wilson's going alongside Lavelli as well. A little bit of contact made with the inside wall. This has certainly got McKnight back involved. And all of a sudden, this queue of cars has um, spread out a little bit. So Wilson, who he, he was uh, on uh, such a great charge, um, was up eight places, I think, from his uh, very start. I think lost out to Warmingham. And then has uh, lost out to... Oh, as we see what happened to this 65 car. Lena Connor. Of uh, Lena Connor, yeah. Uh, okay. So, situation after uh, 12 laps, 25 minutes on the clock. Nicole Foggy is your leader. Tony Krusterman now 6.6, sorry, 6.7 seconds behind. Then Johnny Brandon and George McClay. Um, as you can see, basically, they are one car bit longer than usual but uh, McClay has been holding stations never trying to go for a move in fifth place we have another lonely driver in Michael Taliancic and then behind them it's a free for all uh, every position basically is involved in a fight with someone else here oh wide for the team Chimerica and Wilson is struggling now it all started with that slide one lap ago through the final corner. He's lost four places ever since then. A disastrous lap for uh, Jamie. He was on, uh, yeah, very much a pos positive uh, trajectory before that. And now we have uh, Lavelli versus McKnight. He's come out of the woodwork a little bit. Already gained a couple of places in the last lap or so. And he's trying to make up a third here. The damage on that car, though, affecting his straight line speed. Deep on the brakes, though, for the 0 27. And he does get back ahead. So up into 10th place for McKnight. He's doing a good job. Uh, expect his pace to improve uh, quite a bit once we get to the pit stops. And he can use that faster. Path. Speaking of pit stops, here we go. Nurmela and Woodward are in. So let's hope that these are... Uh... Uh, regular stop so we can use them as a baseline they have the, basically the same uh, you know same amount of time uh, in, uh, in their pit stall so i guess we could use these as baseline stops uh, and looking at that was around uh, 25 20, seconds 20 station seconds. yeah of course will be two pit stops for these drivers not quite sure how close it is going to be well well, I guess they're nearly at the three minute mark, aren't they? So it, it, it will be two pit stops, but we'll see how far they can go in this first thing. It will give us an indication of how much leeway they have. I hope that this isn't going to be as com complex as the AOSC on Friday, uh, which uh, certainly did confuzzle my noggin. Uh, Dominic, sorry, do the cuts thing. I think he's gone a bit wise here. One, the, probably the second most common mistake here and you just get into almost that gutter on the outside of the circuit where it really dips down reduces the grip and uh, well, he's lucky to still be running with that car pointing straight yeah that was a um, pretty hard oh, oh and now Sanderson's round Sanderson, and he's yeah. hit the wall and that was a tap from I think Alsop Alsop the... yeah oh that's a shame for Sanderson he was uh, hounding the back of Stadler for ever so long. And then the uh, Mustang comes up to the back of him. Just a slow exit for Sanderson. I'll stop giving him the, uh, the, the, the touch of death there. Come Jeffrey. Uh, we have to talk, need to talk about the pit entrance in here. Very easy to get a penalty. Yes. And of course, until recently, it was the uh, fastest way you could do a, lap, uh, a qualifying time around this place. 
So they uh, fixed that little loophole. I remember the yeah, Bathurst 12 hours, there was a bit of a, a gap between everyone who uh, did use that, uh, that that advantage. It was deemed to be illegal, unsurprisingly. Yeah, I think the, remember when the new Silverstone came out, uh, uh, for the first few days uh, you could go faster uh, taking pit road uh, than by taking the proper racing line. Well, in the AOLTC, we had a driver in the first race of ever in the AOLTC. And a driver uh, came into the pits on the last lap and gained about four places uh, by doing so. We quickly had to close that loophole, but we allowed it on that one occasion. To be fair, credit to them for that, that cunning. I mean, uh, there was nothing to say that you couldn't do that. Is uh, Taliancic closing in on McLean and, uh, and Brandon? Let's see he the is lap times. Oh yeah, he is. Look at that. Of course, uh, if you have noticed an improvement in the quality of the broadcast, is because Sam is back home. So he's not using the potato machine. And he has the graphics on the screen. Which I, I can epic. see. Honestly, that was, that's been blowing my mind the last few days. I mean... I never see oh. it normally. Here comes McClay. He's actually going to go for it this time. It to the inside, into turn two. Can the championship leader get it stopped? And he can do. So it's taking him 15 laps to get past. But finally, he's done it. George McClay is up into third position. He's 14 seconds off the lead, but that was a, a necessary move with Taliancic looming just behind. Stadler, Sanderson, Bokatayrev all in for their pit stop their first pit stop as you can see on the bottom of your screen you can follow the pit stop time the pit lane time cone to cone as we are uh, oh there's a lap car there it's jeffrey right in front of mcclay you can go straight there you don't get an off track if you want to let people buy oh this isn't what mcclay needs oh good job from jeffrey well let's see if it's good driving there you go it was very good in the end Again, I remind the driver that the Barbanera award is up for grabs today. You need to crash here on this backstretch. I think my car, is still, my car is still stuck in the water. I need to look closer. Oh, yeah. It's a monument. Uh, Nick or Foggy into the pits. Uh, let's see if anyone can go further than 15 laps. If they can't, then that kind of shows how they are actually pretty tight on fuel. Staying out is Klusterman. McClay does so as well. And Taniancic into the pit. So maybe going for the undercut. This is tricky for McClay. You, you kind of feel bad for him a little bit because he's been stuck behind Brandon. And now Taniancic could well do the undercut on the pair of them. It's, it, it'll probably be wise for the pair of them to come in on the next lap, but by which time it might be too late if Taliancic has some free, free air when he comes out. About two seconds difference. It should be maybe even three seconds lap difference uh, between the old tyres and the new. Let's see if uh, McLean and Brandon follow uh, your suggestion, which I think is the, the correct one. To be fair, you do have to warm up the tyres as well, haven't you? So maybe it's not three seconds. But uh, with with these new changes, of course, to the V8 supercar in oh, the yeah, uh, past week, apparently the tyres are, apparently it's a little bit more drivable now, coming out of the corners, a little bit more traction than you had before. And also it, the tyres do warm up, uh, well, they don't warm up faster, but basically they've got more grip at cooler temperatures. So the, uh, the, the undercut should be more powerful than ever. I mean... Uh... The update was released, I think, two days ago, so minimal time for these drivers uh, to, to get up to speed. And we know, in the, you know despite uh, almost everyone being at home for the lockdown, it is certainly, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not uh, always easy to find time uh, to, 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 to train and to, to practice. Everyone is out from the pits of the drivers we were following earlier. Nicole Foggy is in P8, as you can see right now. In a bit of a free track, next car is uh, Lavelli, behind him is, is a car, and Taliancic also seems to be uh, all on his own. Tony Klusterman then, we expect him to pull left in this lap. There we go. 
I'd say 16 laps seems to be the the longest. You can go. Oh, what oh, always scares me a bit when they go in, in there. Um, here comes McClay and Brandon. Every tenth of a second matters for those drivers. Tony Entrich had a 27.75 second pit stop. Um, there's a bit of a range actually, 24 seconds to 30 seconds. So um, maybe. Some drivers have been taking a little bit less fuel, get track position perhaps for this next stint as all the midfield runners also come into the pits. Nickel Foggy will retake the lead then. What have we got? Beacom is off at Forest Elbow. Back on the track, Foggy takes the lead. So where is Taliancic? He's coming through the last couple of corners at the moment, is Taliancic. This could be quite close between him um, and Brandon. Even Klusterman is uh, only just coming out of the pits. Wow. Which is uh, way ahead, isn't he? Four seconds longer for McClay, five seconds longer for Brandon. I guess that makes sense, doesn't it? So clearly Taliancic didn't take a full tank of fuel where these guys have. So, they'll have fresher tyres for the last stint, but, well, I see that, to, to me, Marco, that looks like a bigger strategy from Tejancic. Gets track position, has a little bit less fuel, and also means that he's going to have three even stints, which is probably the best strategy for the tyres. Yeah, uh, looks like uh, it's going to be a good one for him, a great call, and of course we, we, we left to see how it will... Uh progress throughout the race uh, if the strategy will come back to help McClay and Brandon but uh, as per usual always uh, worth to keep an eye on Michael and again he shows uh, a bit of a surprising uh, decision which worked in his favor as it uh, usually happens and now he has to back it up with some great driving that we know he's capable of McClay and Brandon elder positions uh, you know compared to each other Still very close, I don't think they're going to be separated unless something crazy happens. Because they are so evenly matched, even now that McClay is in front. Good job by Normella now up to 8th place. Yeah, that was really good for Normella, wasn't it? Although, he, I mean, he's pushing it when it comes to fuel. And, ooh, I'm, I'm a bit concerned for Normella. Because he only was stationary for 25 seconds in his pit stop. That's one of the shorter pit stops we've had. So I wonder if he's going for, uh, for a three stop. Because he needs to get to the hour mark in order to get to the end of the race from there. Uh, foggy 203-848. That's the fastest lap of the race so far. Let's get the best lap time. So. And you can see the only driver in the 203s is uh, Mr. Nicole Foggy. It's only 8 tenths of his uh, qualifying time as well. We might see the qualifying lap time being broken in the last stint because the track is getting cooler, of course, but a bit extra grip. A good point you are making Sam of course we are heading into uh, the sunset Let's so new I guess yeah. um, uh, got ahead of Woodward uh, sorry got ahead of Lavelli then in the uh, in the pit stops didn't he yeah he was three seconds faster uh, stationary so uh, 24 degrees check temperature thanks for that Marco as uh, moving back past then is Steve Lavey into 11th place. Uh, next up for him will be Jamie Wilson, who has recovered after a treacherous lap he had, where he lost about four places in uh, in just one tour of this Bathurst circuit. By the way, I um, don't know if Adam Hedgecock is still listening or not, um, but... Uh, Listening about that chasm comment. Um, it was me, too, who came up with the chasm. And he was shocked when I said the word chasm. I don't know why. Um, apparently, it's not part of my vocabulary, but uh, he was uh, convinced by it. Uh, by the way, thanks, Marco, there, for not using the TVT when I it was that switched, uh, You know, at the 
very last second. Thanks to everyone who's uh, subscribed, by the way. We haven't got many viewers, and yet people are still subscribing. May actually, oh, that's probably for the other stream, isn't yes. it? Yes, they are oh. watching the, the um, oh, arrow to win the race, I think. I think that but is you're listening to us, and you, you are watching a very good race, so uh, lucky best. you. You really are. You know, it's, it's easy to go to the glitz and glamour of these new streams, but, uh, you know, this is the Euro V8 resistance. Watching us and following us and still following us after almost now two years to the date of uh, Marco and Sam uh, uh, broadcasts, which... Uh, very surprising that this hasn't led to the demise of Apex. You know, you, you never know. I mean, we've missed something, haven't we? Uh, which was quite significant. Harold Stadler, he had a one minute ten pit stop. He's absolutely messed up in some regards. Um, pro probably pit entry or pit limiter or both, because he lost about thirty-five seconds in the pit stops. And I was thinking, where, where is he? I mean, that, that's a massive shame as well because he was uh, kind of bottling up that entire midfield. And uh, yeah, he's made a mistake seemingly on the uh, on the pit entry. Let's see. Seemed to slow down enough, but did he just take too much grass on the pit entry then? Let's see the pit exit. No, but he's only made one pit stop. So oh, I, yeah. I don't think it was yeah. Dear me, you're I think it was an extra right. pit stop. Uh, forty second pit entry penalty. Uh, oh, the... right. Okay, so that's what uh, that's what Jackson, Jackson thinks. I mean, that would make sense. Yeah, forty seconds would uh, would be about perfect. Is that um? Is that the default then? Forty seconds. I swear it used to be fifteen. But maybe they've increased it. Forty seconds does seem a bit harsh, I must say, considering that you probably gained about half a second on pet entry. But uh, but there you go. Apparently, pet entry here is forty seconds. Thank you to uh, to Chris for that one. As we see the retirees so far in this race, um, Bingham, Switzer, apologies, Bingham's still running. Uh, Switzer, Hoffman. O'Connor, Buzan, and Jackson. I think Switzer is still running. Five laps down. There he is. Good car. Oh, looks clean. Mm. No, it doesn't. He's missing no. the bonnet. <laughs> All right, apart from the bonnet. It's a very clean car, yes. It's just a very nice livery. Um, I, the I... fact that I can see these liveries now, I, I'm just dazzled. I mean, they're, they're all so good. Yeah, and I, the race tech uh, decals as well, or, or, all the glossy stuff, like the XBR one, looks fantastic. And we had race tech on uh, on Switzer's car as well. Yes, uh, it's I mean, a really nice element. It is absolutely fantastic. By the way, uh, I remember the, that I could make you happy now, showing uh, an extended timing tower. So you're welcome. And uh, I, I've always been campaigning for the yes. uh, for the thirty timing tower. I mean, I think I think it just looked. I think it looks good, in in my opinion. Um, told that to Sam Kume. Um, no, no, he, he to be fair, he's adopted it for the uh, ARL GT Championship, which I much appreciate. Look at uh, on board with uh, with Jim McKnight, one of the more experienced driver of this championship, and uh, as you can see, fighting with that steering wheel. Let's uh, bring on the dashboard and see if he go through the gears on uh, on Conrad straight still following in the footsteps of Nurbela I think Marco now struggling a bit with those tires after of course getting a massive jump and of course uh, as you were saying he needs to be careful with the fuel otherwise he will uh, have to stop uh, for a third time later and you don't want to do that of course uh, very early stop for uh, for the Finnish driver yeah I, I can only see him doing three stops it seems like the longest the fuel can go is uh, 35 minutes, and, and that's if you boom it to the tank. Um, to be uh, to be fair, actually, he may have had some fuel left over, didn't he? 
So maybe he did have a full tank from lap 12. We'll see. If he gets to lap 55, he should be... Uh, sorry, minute 55, he should be all right. McKnight, though, you'd have seen me used his uh, his faster pair as fast pit stop. And so he's uh, lapping a little bit faster now. That last lap, 2 minute 5.31. That's faster than everyone ahead of him, apart from the uh, apart from the top five drivers. Nicole Foggy having a little bit of a tricky lap time that last time. And he lost one second to Tony Kleesman. Something that uh, has been at a premium so far today. Got down to six seconds out in the lead. Some traffic. For, uh, no, sorry, that is Richard also. No traffic at all. These drivers, as you can see, the sun very, uh, very uh, pesky uh, coming from behind those trees. Wonder if the race car drivers will swap positions. They don't usually work too much in unison. They're, they're usually quite um, working for themselves. Because they are very evenly matched, these uh, these two drivers. But uh, might be worth letting Al stop go. He does seem to have a bit more pace at the moment. And we have seen, well, we always see around this circuit, tricky to overtake. And when you do try to overtake, it can end in tears. So it could be a smart decision to just coordinate this one. McClay still not pulling away. I guess... What we need to keep an eye on in is whether whether or not they're catching up to Italian Church. Um, two tenths fast on that last lap, Orson McClay. As long as he maintains that gap to Italian Church, he should be in a good position later on. Although Italian Church, of course, will get the fresher tyre sooner. Um, basically, if McClay's going to beat Italian Church, he's going to have to overtake him later on in the race, which is uh, a predicament he probably didn't uh, want to find himself in. You can see after the pit stop, it has been steady gains for uh, for McLean and I will guess all, also for Brandon. Knew it with an issue. He's there spinning somewhere. There we go. Oh, and that was that contact with Sanderson as well. I think uh, almost. Let's see from the chopper. I don't think they made contact in the end. He hit the wall. Oh no, they made. Oh, there was. Yeah. Oh, Samson's been unlucky today, hasn't he? Got taken out earlier on, and uh, this time... Well, I mean, he could have left a bit more space, couldn't he? But still, a bit unlucky for, for him. The car seems to be... mostly okay on the right side. Let's see. A bit of damage on the right rear wheel arch, but apart from that... Could have been worse. The important thing is that the suspension is okay. Also, blinking on top of the mountain, never a good thing. Oh, and now he's off. Oh, man. Oh, almost into the barrier. Normal as quick spy. I don't know if this was coordinated. If it was, it was very risky indeed. <laughs> Maybe this is McKnight's best opportunity to get past Al Sop whilst he's uh, going to be uh, a little bit nervous after that small mistake he just made. Gaining in the slipstream, but Al Sop with a little bit of a slipstream as well behind his own teammate, and that's perhaps just saving him at the moment. Chris Jackson um, talking about the strategy between Tajancic and McClay. Uh, the reason why I say McClay is going to have to overtake him on track is because I'm thinking Italian is going to pit earlier than McClay. We'll get some fresh tyres. And compared to McClay's old tyres, he, he should have two uh, two or three laps to Italian Cic to, to, to point where he'll probably be two seconds lap faster. So we'll, we'll probably be comfortably ahead when the second pit stops are all complete. Um, but of course, McClay will have fresh tyres towards the end of the event. So we uh, could certainly come back. Bit of a lockup there for Alsop. And when you make a mistake in a corner, uh, the next time you go to that corner, uh, you are uh, always thinking, uh, at least I'm always thinking about the mistake I made the previous lap. So let's see if Alsop can avoid uh, repeating his, uh, his error from earlier. A little bit of a touch to the barrier, nothing major. It makes you go faster, I'm told. 
of course I hit my car in the only place where you don't go faster if you hit the wall. Yeah, I, I imagine that friction will probably uh, slow you down a little bit. Next round, the championship, Marco. Uh, just looking at the calendar, it's going to be Lime Rock Park. Now, that one excites me a lot when it comes to uh, this series because veterans of this series, proper proper box set people who, who I have no doubt have been watching every single uh, race we do of this series will remember the legend that is season four. Just a couple of weeks before you probably joined Apex Racing TV, Marco, and joined this series. Uh, when uh, JP Busalan famously took the race win, I believe in uh, race two at, uh, at Lime Rock Park, it was absolutely legendary. I mean, in terms of sporting moments, it really does rank in my top five. Um, JP, unfortunately, not racing so much in this series anymore. Uh, but that what that one's going to be uh, that one's going to be good. Very tricky to overtake circuit that, and of course we are going to have the super sprints as well. So probably the best chance this season that we're going to have a uh, a surprise winner because. I think we're yet to get a surprise winner really so far this season, Marco. If the if the website is correct, we are will be racing at the Grand Prix layout, which means that we'll have uh, the first chicane. Which uh, the old first chicane was uh, a nightmare. Oh yeah. But this is uh, like this is uh, I think uh, you know basically the the Baku chicane, but uh, you know in a normal race track, so to speak. There is no space to go. Even we oh, someone hit the wall hard. I think that may have been netcode. It could be, yes. So, so I mean, there is. Uh, we are racing there with the F3 in the fixed series this week. There is no space for two F3 cars there. I cannot imagine two B8s going side by side there. So, it would make for certainly an interesting uh, spot during the races. Of course, there will be short races, so. It's not going to be easy to pass for the quicker drivers, as you were saying. Triple header, so the return of the reverse grid wheel, which makes me very happy. Uh, and, and yeah, uh, of course, a new, a new and improved Lame Rock, as I was saying. A beautiful track with, uh, I think, the best scenery in all of my racing right now. As you were saying, uh, for the first time in, in years, so the series will return to Lime Rock Park. Yeah, a couple of years since we were last there. I, I, I think the last race before I joined was actually Detroit. Uh, sorry, not Detroit. It was uh, Long Beach in this series. Yes, oh, I remember that round. So, yeah. Um, who was the driver who never won races but was always really close? His name escapes, escapes me now. I, uh, do you know who I'm talking about? I think he won like one race in this series, led the championship for a bit as well. But honestly, his name just, I'm sure Chris Jackson will be able to recall what his uh, name was. Um, raced in season five, I think, as well. Um, but um, yeah, he famously lost the race at Long Beach with a complete self mistake and lost the championship lead as well to, uh, to Michael Docker, I think it was, um, back when he was racing in this series. Uh, this man wasn't racing in the series back then. Uh, but he certainly is racing now. Six and a half seconds. Nicole Foggy has as a lead. And last lap, he lost another attempt to uh, uh, to Tony Klusman. As you can see, in this stint, being very evenly matched, pretty much no change in the gap whatsoever. It was about seven seconds. Still just under seven seconds. Credit to Klusman and no disrespect to Tony whatsoever, but... Mark, this so far this season it hasn't been a great season for Tony. I don't believe he's won a race so far this championship and has rarely been on the pace of Brandon and uh, and Foggy. And he's made a few mistakes as well. But today, this has been a, a perfect drive for me. It's, it's just been that Foggy's just been that little bit better. But you, you think how far ahead Klusman is of Talianchich, McClay and Brandon. Any other day, he'd be winning this race comfortably. It's just Foggy is, uh, it is exceptional around this track. Yeah, uh, you know, you know, Johnny Brandon has had a tough season, but he had the pace, so he showed the pace to, to be competitive every round for the podium, and, you know, incidents and mistakes have hampered him. Uh, Tony has had a very, very tough season so far, so uh, it, 
But, but you know, we, we were talking about this la- two weeks ago and uh, in the opening of the broadcast is always one of the names uh, uh, to keep in your mind uh, for, uh, for, for, uh, for Bathurst and he's proving to be, you know, again, uh, one of the toughest nuts to crack around here. Unfortunately for him, Foggy is uh, really at one with this, with his racetrack. So, uh, unless Nicole makes a mistake uh, uh, on track or in the pits of Fortoni is going to be tough to get past him but in any case uh, he is really putting on a fantastic performance uh, and you know maybe this can kickstart his uh, season in the second half as uh, Nurmela on the outside of Warmingham that is not usually a place where you can pass uh, but uh, no in fact oh wow. that's close to the wall oh, yeah, and now trying to take advantage of it is Alsop these are teammates remember and also oh, it's going down the inside. Oh, and the Oh, don't make contact. Oh, and and they both tapped the wall, oh, but geez. got away without too much damage. And that was just silly. No one benefits from that whatsoever. Namella stays ahead, and they should be very happy that they're both still in this race. Let's get a replay of that from Alsop's perspective. I mean, they must be in the same Discord as well. And goes, I mean, this is all right. I, I, I mean, I guess you could say neither of them have done anything particularly wrong. But, yeah, that, that was a bit aggressive, I thought, from, uh, from Alsop. And then he, he kind of, Novella kind of came across him because Novella was in such a slide, couldn't control his car. Oh, very lucky. You, you, you know, when you are teammates uh, and you are side by side entering uh, uh, that corner, I think you should, one of the two should lift yeah i mean that's what i would do but i'm you know i am talking with my 800 i rating so <laughs> what do i know yeah what uh, and of course what happens to you last time you visited this circuit marco um probably yeah, it doesn't give you a whole lot of authority um also every 12 hours of bathurst i've done i've crashed um but last time wasn't my fault i i, I will say that one uh, i'm to defend now is uh is our stop although McKnight just runs a little bit wide through the final corner and it's kind of prevented him from having a chance into Hell Corner. Hell Corner, of course, named because, uh, of course, motorcycle racing used to be very prominent around this place. And if you dropped it at Hell Corner, uh, your chances of survival were pretty low. Uh, hence that you would uh, go into the underworld uh, soon after. I believe that is the uh, reason why it is called that. Um, Sanson is going to be overtaken here by Greg Carr. Remember Greg Carr? Um, he was uh, leading the club standings earlier on. You know what? He's only seven seconds off Lavelli. This could be a great comeback for Greg Hart. First up, though, he needs to defend from Sanson. And he's left the door open. He might regret that in just a moment's time if Sanson has the confidence on the brakes. Sanson is going to try to go for this one alongside the turn two. Car just about getting his machine back ahead and he uh, does get ahead going into the cutscene. Yeah, come on, so come on. Car. Come on, where is your where is your bravery? Car, machine, car, car. I mean You realize that that's that, I don't think that sounds great, Mark. And I was <laughs> just having that contemplation. Uh should I say car car? <laughs> but no, I say car machine. I was thinking as well, what other words can I call this? Oh, I could call it a a a a, a, a Holden, couldn't I? Could call it uh, that. Yeah, a vehicle. Uh... A vehicle, yeah. A transportation device. Yes. <laughs> An automobile. Oh, absolutely. All right. Next time we have a dramatic moment, I will call it an automobile uh, to, uh, to 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 uh, uh, make you feel happy. By the way, it's a minute fifty-seven, and uh, Nurmela has not pitted. A minute 57? No, it is minute 57. A minute 57, all right. Of the race, and so he, I guess he's good to go to the end, according to your Yeah, it should be all right. Uh, here comes, uh, so it's actually McKnight first driver into the pits. He, so did he, has he already used his fast repair? Because there's still a bit of damage on that car. It seems to be a similar amount of damage to what he had earlier on. So um, let's see if he does take the fast repair now. See if that car magically uh, uh, improves in appearance. Uh, by the way, yeah, so the reason why I guess Namella 
Uh, I, I got confused with him there because Ooh. when he came into the pits earlier on, he must have had a bit of fuel spare. Uh, McKnight does take his fast pair. It's odd they didn't take the fast pair at the first pit stop, Marco. Either he forgot or uh, he, he, he said, you know, he wanted to save it uh, for maybe some bigger damage. But now, yeah, I mean, he's going to be a driver to watch, absolutely. Might be worth watching a bit more TV3. Dare I say. Uh, here we go. Oh, look at that. It's nice, doesn't it? Nice shot of the of the whole area of Mount Panorama. Panorama, of course, Italian for uh, landscape. Really? Okay. Beautiful, a view, uh, landscape. Yes. Of course, they're making a uh, another Mount Panorama circuit, aren't they? Um, going to be a little bit more traditional rather than uh, than this place, a bit more a uh, bit, bit more generic, uh, but. Uh, be cool to have a couple of supercars rounds uh, on this uh, on this area of Australia. Brandon comes into the pits then, so he was losing a little bit of time to McClay ahead, and now it's gone. Well, I'm gonna try to undercut you now, mate, if I possibly can. Probably the wise thing to do. I think it was probably his only option in order to challenge McClay for fourth place, and probably even Taliantrich as well for third. Well, it's quite deceiving this pit lane. The the drivers are so far down it. There's pretty much you can you can pretty much run without the uh, pit limiter uh, coming out because uh, you are that close to the uh, pit exit line as the uh, two racecraft drivers come in and a few others as well, Woodward and and Car as well. Oh, sorry, not Car. That was uh, was it Warmingham just ahead of them? No, apologies, Lavelli. Pocatai in as well. Yeah, lots of cars uh, in the pits. Stadler also makes his way through. Of course, McKnight has already stopped. Leaders are still uh, out as, uh, yeah, uh, most of the top five, of course, not uh, Johnny Brandon, who will just come out of the pits. Here comes uh, Alsop. Here comes Nurmela. Now we will see. Oh, Hang on, so Alsop is back ahead of Nurmela then, isn't he? So they're going to have to go through that whole fighting one another again because uh, when Nurmela managed to pass him earlier on, Foggy into the pit. And Klusman stays out, may as well. A little bit more fuel. Taliancic, what does he do? He comes in. So, and does McClay come in straight after yes. as well? Yes, he does. So... This is a big moment then for the championship leader. He got the gap to about three and a half seconds. And I th yeah, McClay, who did he? So he came in actually behind as well. That could lose him a bit of time. He came in behind Jeffy, uh, Jamie Jeffrey. I wonder if that cost him a bit of time on uh, pit entry. It's going to be uh, really close. Let's see who comes out ahead, Tajancic or uh, or or um, uh, McClay. Back out of the pits is Nicole Foggy then. And he comes out uh, in second place. In fact, is he behind Jamie Wilson? No, he's still just ahead of, uh, of Jamie Wilson. Uh, anyway, meanwhile, McClay and Taliancic. Taliancic is out. And McClay still stationary. He had a one second shorter pit stop. So that means across their two pit stops, I think Taliancic was stationary for about two seconds less. And it means that Michael Tajancic, who was uh, a bit by himself in fifth place earlier on, is up into third place when all the pit stops are sorted out. Didn't work out for Brandon. And that outlap just wasn't quite strong enough for him, and he stays behind McClay. But these are crucial points lost for uh, for George McClay. And it seems that he's going to get fourth place at best from today's event. Everyone is waiting for uh, Tony Klusterman. To basically complete this uh, pit stop round and of course Jamie Wilson the only two top runners left without their second stop here comes Tony 
Oh. Oh, Wilson is uh, miles behind. Quite literally. 52 seconds as Wilson. So, uh, Porky will uh, take back the lead. His lead should be probably six or seven seconds after this, like it was earlier on. This man, of course, season one champion, season two champion as well. Uh, Foggy season six champion and hoping to add uh, season eight to his uh, resume as well. Uh, Tony Kluisman still stationary up to 27 and a half seconds. So one second quicker than Foggy in the pit stop. Maybe using a little bit less fuel in that last stint. Uh, but he is still a little bit further behind. Uh, credit to Wilson. He's uh, managed to stay up for a bit longer. Went to lap 16 in, in his first stint. Put all the fuel he could possibly put in. It was a long pit stop for him. And uh, these extra laps maybe could get him up into sixth place. Could get him ahead of... McKnight. In fact, Warmingham's lost out during these pit stops. So uh, Richard Warmingham with a uh, three-second longer pit stop, even four seconds longer pit stop than McKnight and Alsop means that uh, Richard Warmingham is only in ninth place now. Wilson uh, deserves a bit of camera time then for his brave uh, and st brave strategy and uh, long, uh, you know, nice fuel saving. And as you can see, he's struggling just a bit with this car. And he is really on the edge. We'll see him sideways for the good portion of this lap. He will be so happy when he jumps into the pits and has uh, fresh tires. And of course, he will have, even though by just a couple of laps, maybe three, but the fresher lap, fresh, freshest laps, uh, freshest tires of the. Uh, sorry, I was uh, I was um, thinking about uh, the cake I'm going to eat later. Oh, oh, no need to rub it in, Mark. Hey, jeez. What, what cake is it? Uh, I don't know. I think it's chocolate cake. The best cake. Given that My mum actually might be making a Victoria sponge in the uh, uh, what? in the next tomorrow. Do you know what a Victoria sponge is? No. Oh, my goodness. Everyone on the chat. I think they will be gasping right now, all our viewers, at least from the UK. A uh, Victoria sponge is, um, it's like two kind of normal sponges plus jam and cream. Mm, sounds tasty. I love, I love jam. So I certainly recommend, change. I mean, it is a Victoria sponge, so I guess it's like named after like Queen Victoria or, um, Another famous Victoria. I know Victoria Azarenka. That's the first Victoria that came into I'm my mind. Thinking about um, the state of Victoria in, in Australia, not in, in, uh, yeah. in, in, improbable, but you know. probably yeah. not Victoria Azarenka. She is very good at tennis, but uh, probably not named after. I believe Jackson that I did it. Doesn't know what you're talking about, by the way, in the chat. What? Seriously? Well, I don't see. Oh, oh, wow. I've been missing loads of messages on the chat. Um, not so clear. I've had them. Never knew they were called Victoria Sponge. This is remarkable. Come on, all the Brits. Where are you? As Delia Smith would say. That's another reference that uh, to that Marco will, uh, uh, will understand. Um, so, but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's my brother's birthday tomorrow, so... It's, it's cake uh, cake day tomorrow, and uh, of course Thursday uh, is going to. I, I uh, Thursday I'm going to be turning into the wrong side of thirty. Oh, the big three o. No, the big three one. No, the wrong side. It's three one. I three one. Okay, the big Th three one. You're properly in your thirties, and aren't you? Yes, and oh. uh, again for me thirty one onwards is the already the wrong side of thirty. So. I get scared when I turned 19 um, a few months ago. I was like, what? As, as someone who's got the maturity of a 10 year old, I, it, it was quite worrying, to be honest. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't know how it must feel to be like 31. I mean, I remember uh, a few years ago, like four or five years ago, I used to, I'm not kidding, wake up in the middle of the night and thinking, 
Oh man, I'm going to be 35 years. Wow, that's uh, a lot of future though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and you weren't concerned that you were 25 at the time? Um, not really. But to be fair, it's, it's, it's nice, uh, but you know. You see, I'd say, it's, I'd say 36 is the big one, because that's when the demographic changes, isn't it? All of a sudden, you're not a typical 18 to 35 year old sim racer. You're 36. <laughs> and I mean, 36, pretty, that, pretty much 36 to 60. I mean, that's the age range you're in there. Uh, I, I don't wish to cause any uh, any offense to anyone uh, 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 over the age of 36. Uh, what's happened here to Harold Stadler? Did he park the car? Well, he seemed to have a bit of damage on it, though. Yeah. But I don't, cannot find any kind of. Uh... Incident uh, on the event viewer. A fight here. McKnight going past the uh, back marker. Just about staying lined there. I'll stop trying to get past him. Alsop's had an upturn in pace in this uh, last stint. Remember, he was overtaken by McKnight, I believe, in the first stint of this race. McKnight then proceeded to pull away a little bit, but. Um, our stop has uh, closed back in ever since. They should pay me extra for this broadcast because uh, having to remember when to switch away from the excellent TV2 cameras up the hill, it's, uh, it's tough, tough, tough work. Like right about now and then you have to switch otherwise. Uh... There you go, well done. I don't know how, why I thought, oh, I'm halfway through. Um, I, I won't compete the others. It might just be a glitch with one of the cameras, which is ruining it for for all of them. No, actually, I did complete this entire circuit, TVT. So it, there must be a glitch with, with one of the cameras, which has got the timing wrong. McKnight getting held up behind the uh, car number 42. That's Dominic Sori. One lap down on these drivers now. Fortunately for him, Alsop wasn't close enough previously to uh, take full advantage of it. No, the problem uh, to talk to Phoenix is that, uh, uh, you know, Sam does costume cameras for every track. Yep. And, and he also has, li like like today, some uh, last minute updates, which I think uh, um, it's great. They're only to the TV3, hence why I wanted you to show more TV3. Ah, okay. Um, I went a little bit OP with the, uh, with the Vanish Y a few months ago when I did a few cameras. As, uh, there we go. Here we see. Um... Who is that? I mean, that is uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey going wide. Yeah. And I mean, uh, uh, we are only on Apex Racing TV today. First of all, let's uh, have a thought for uh, our uh, new broadcaster in training, Dennis Branch, who is in the uh, uh, you know in the in the commentary box with us. He's shadow broadcasting this race, and he has going. He, he, he's sitting through our nonsense. Uh, for the past uh, hour and a half, and hopefully... I mean, I feel terrible for him, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I, the, the, only worse than that is anyone who watched the Sim Races World Endurance Championship uh, a couple of weeks back, which, don't watch it. I mean, it'll decrease your, your IQ, I think. Oh, it will increase your IQ. There were plenty of interesting uh, discussions. Courgette? You still don't know what a courgette is. N no, uh, but I, I, you know, I, I can tell you that. I mean, that, that's what I love the most about endurance racing uh, is that uh, after a bit, when the racing comes down and then it comes back up, but because that's the way endurance works. You, know, you have up and down, up and down. It's that uh, the commentators uh, have a little bit more time to talk about uh, random stuff, interesting tidbits. Uh, you know, it would be boring if you were only always talking about the racing, even if there was no racing on. We have some racing here, by the way, because uh, again, Nurmela with his fresher tires trying to attack Warmingham in the chase, and I think he has a good chance, Sam. Side by side on the inside is the racecraft car, oh, almost making contact, and now on the brakes, I think Marco will complete the pass. Great job. No, so it's it's great to every once in a while go. We don't we're not going overboard uh, on the on on the off topic, uh, but uh, you know, I mean, when you have to fill a six seven hour broadcast, uh, 
you need to have a little bit of leeway in the, in that sense and uh, of course uh, uh, well yeah uh, I am a 4 GT3 fan I don't know about Sam Sam seems to be hating on the blue oval uh, um well I like the Mustang pace car so that counts doesn't it yes I mean so I, I am a Ford you. fan um, in in that case uh, here comes uh, Warmium kind of trying to come back at Nomella. Remember, Warmium was up in uh, sixth place before the pit stops. I think he had a slightly shorter first pit stop, or maybe just overfilled in his uh, second pit stop. And it uh, lost him a, a few places, and then since then he's been struggling a little bit for, for pace, and he was a comfortable sixth as well. It's been a bit strange in this race how the, how the pace kind of changed quite a bit in this, uh, in this midfield. Alsop seemed to really be struggling in, in, uh, in uh, the second stint and Warmium be absolutely thriving, and since then it's kind of flipped on its head so and uh, now there's quite a big gap between uh, those guys today it's McKnight trying to hold off Alstop and Namella now pulling away from Warmium also got Wilson in uh, in 10th place and a quick pit stop did uh, did Wilson got ahead of these guys at one point he was up into 8th place started 16th got up to 8th almost immediately and then has actually fallen down since then the oh that's his late tight onto the uh, inside 23.6 seconds, uh, one of the quicker pit stops uh, uh, in this second round. If there is a, if a broadcast where you shouldn't go and listen to it, because that will really make you stupid, is the Road America uh, Endurance uh, Series uh, 1, with the one hour and a half discussion about a certain team name, which I won't repeat oh, right I'm now, because that. I don't want to start it again. I can't even remember it. And, and the problem is that there was Austin uh, making even more fuel to the fire during the race. But yeah, I mean, look at the beautiful sunset we are having right here, right now. I don't think we will be in headlights uh, zone this, this year, but uh, certainly a very poetic uh, end of the race, very, uh, you know, beautiful, I'd say, uh, images here from, uh, from Mount Panorama. Let's check in with our race leader as, uh, you know, we're only 15 minutes away from the white flag. Nicole Foggy is really enjoying himself out there right now. Almost 10 seconds lead over Tony Klusterman in second. There is Tony. Third place, uh, Michael Taliancic. He's got a decent advantage over, over George McClay. Four seconds and a half. There is George. And George has been able to, you know, pull away from Johnny sitting in fifth place and you know with 25 seconds and a half over McKnight and as we have, we have seen McKnight, Alsop, uh, Nurmela and Warmingham are all together the top 10 is rounded up by your late stopper of the day I think at least from the front runners Jamie Wilson as he's sitting in 10th and Whiting Whiting with an issue I think he went wide and uh, he went deep and wide um, into the final uh, into the chase. No damage for him. That was, I think, uh, Michael Taliancic, uh, 7 going by. I think we may have had a change of position between Bogotayev and Newitt quite recently. Bogotayev uh, now ahead by about a second. I saw these guys get very close before. Four hands. Beautiful overtake. No, that was not new. It's sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not watching the same replay for you for some reason. No, I was watching a car entering in the pits. Okay. I mean, I'm going I... backwards and backwards and backwards and backwards and backwards. I, maybe there wasn't a change of position. Maybe they just got placed for a moment. Uh, but Bogotayev and uh, Anu have been very close for, uh, for the majority of this race. Uh, eight tenths of a second between the pair of them at the moment. Also, that battle for the lead in the club championship between Lavelli and Carr. Only five seconds between the pair of them. Carr in that last set was two tenths of a second quicker. I feel bad for Greg Carr. He was probably about 15 seconds behind at one point with a few cars between him and Lavelli uh, when he got involved in that... Um, in that shunt, I think at this very corner, actually, on the uh, on the first lap, 
He's done a really good job ever since then of recovering, but it seems like Lavelli is going to just extend that, uh, extend that championship lead, which he uh, has had for a while. I believe I put Lavelli as my favourite to win the uh, club championship as well, whereas you put uh, Greg Carr, Marco. So uh, I, I, I'm uh, feeling quite confident now. I mean, that However, I did put Chris Jackson as my overall title win. And ja uh, Chris, if you're still listening along, you, you've, you've let me down. I'm Italian, so my predictions, uh, when they are wrong, uh, they don't count. It's more interesting and uh, unique when, they, uh, when, when I get them right. What's the best prediction we've ever made in terms of a series? You predicted Foggy would win season six, I think. Yes, I got, yeah. I got that one right. Uh, Not, I don't ever. think either of us put Brandon last. I think we, we always kind of are a bit pessimistic about Johnny, despite the fact that he's won two of the last three championships. I, I think I, I remember saying that, you know, usually we finish, the guy that finishes second one year wins the title the next year, no? So who finished second when Nicole won the title? Brandon, no? So uh, it was McClay. It was McClay who finished second? Oh, oh sorry, when, when Brandon won the title, yeah. it was... Yeah. When Foggy won it, it was Brandon. When Brandon won it last time, it was McClay. It was McClay uh, yeah, yeah, it was McClay. Because Foggy missed much of last season. Gained the TCR bug. I can't even remember if Foggy's racing in uh, in ARLTC this season. I know, you're the league organizer. So. Yeah, I, I ought to know. Because <laughs> unfortunately the uh, the meeting at Virginia was cancelled on uh, on Thursday after one race, thanks to a conveniently timed uh, iRacing uh, update. Many drivers were very pleased. Thank Apparently, you. Apparently Virginia racing. isn't very popular. <laughs> I, I would have been happy. <laughs> It wasn't the Grand West circuit. I was very disappointed. You know, the, you know. Speaking of Virginia, uh, quarantine, uh, lockdown, uh, call it whatever you want. Uh, I, I'm thinking it's it's getting bad because just before this broadcast, I was lapping around uh, the Virginia International Raceway uh, in in Automobilista 2 with uh, the 2010 Red Bull, uh, uh, you know, copycat. Wow, okay. So that, that's, <laughs> that, that's, a, that, that's a clear signal that things are going south. That, that yeah, is an obscure combination of car and track. I still need to tell you how to activate the Automobilista 1, by the way. Yeah. You need to tell me how to use Steam, to be honest. That's the oh, thing that I'm... Oh, wow. I'm okay. Awful. Well, I might, I might not know what is a Victoria Sponge, but Steam is, you know... Well, I just, just don't know how to put in the code. Where do you put it? <laughs> Why isn't there a big red button saying, input code here, and you just press it, and it does all of it for you? Silly Steam. And also, you not knowing what a Victoria Sponge is, is far worse, because you haven't eaten a Victoria Sponge. Oh. Uh, Bobby Child, There's do you Bobby know Childs. what a Victorian uh, Victoria Sponge is? I mean, I, I, I was there cheering for Bobby last uh, last Monday at Lime Rock uh, in in Rikmotek. and also, you know, for oh, once as new, new it is in, I, I I never want to use my supposed uh, I wouldn't say celebrity status because it's not you know, but. I wanted to bother uh, Bobby this past week or so, uh, and I will use this platform to bother him because I'm too shy to talk to him in private. But uh, man, I really need uh, Bobby to, when he has time, if he has time, to give me a quick uh, how to on how he makes his fantastic liveries because. Uh, I am trying to replicate the Brown GP livery on the F3 car and I am struggling mightily. 
Uh, I can do a lot of stuff with Photoshop, some even complex liveries, but the pen tool uh, to make the, those shapes. And Bobby does some amazing liveries. Bobby has done all the liveries for the Road to Indy uh, series, for example. He's uh, a fantastic uh, maestro of, uh, of livery creating. And uh, yeah, the pen tool is really the bane of my existence. Uh, I have been spending the good portion of the past week trying to replicate the Brown GP black and, and, and yellow uh, stripe from the front of the car to the side and I wanted to cry sometimes because I'm absolutely not <laughs> I mean again I can do a lot of stuff with Photoshop at a you know basic level slash decent but that really evades me quite massively as this is the closest fight on the field by the way like Knight and Allsop. Any famous uh, motorsports liveries with uh, with Magenta on? Uh, bar the classic 1050 Barbanero liveries. Uh, Just wondering if you can include that uh, that colour somewhere. Magenta livery. Well, I'm sure there have been some. It's not a classic livery, but there was a prototype in uh, in, in the IMSA series many years ago. That was uh, black and magenta. driven by I Olivier Pla, among others. Would like to see that one at some point. Uh, Richard Alsop, some tends to a second behind now. That gap has been quite similar. It's always tricky when you're the car ahead in this situation. You've got so much more to lose. And certainly as the car following, it, it, it does give you that extra bit of time because you're the one who's having to catch up. You've got slightly less to lose than your rival. You're not thinking about the positions you're going to lose behind. You're thinking of the position that you might potentially gain. Uh, this was a, another mistake from uh, Jamie Jeffrey, who, to be fair, is in 17th place. I moment. might have to start banning some people from the chat. Oh dear, what? Magenta? You don't know what magenta is? No, 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 it doesn't, he doesn't like magenta. Oh, wow. <laughs> Which is even worse. Headlights? Um, yeah, that's, headlights, why, why no, wouldn't you like magenta? You see, do you see headlights? Oh, there we are. I Beautiful. see headlights, yeah. There, there we, uh, here we go. The best color in the history of colors. One thing's for sure, you don't go unnoticed when you drive a Magenta car. Exactly. I assume you saw the uh, the dynamic liveries on April Fools. Yes. With the uh, liveries are exchanged color. I it, it, many of those shots being taken at this circuit. I thought it looked superb. I would love that to be implemented. You think that it, you you're like a proper billboard? Like an animated yeah. billboard on circuit, <laughs> the sponsors would love it. Imagine like a Coke. Uh, imagine like a a champagne bottle. You know the champagne bottle at mm -hmm. um, at Road America, how it squirts out on the bridge. Imagine having that, but like on the car, like having that animation. It would There's look. There's a champagne terrific. bottle at Road America. Or is it the cheese? Oh, it's that's, the that's cheese. That's, uh, it? Yeah, but you know, you can uh, you can see like for example, they could have. Uh, a car that uh, is like black, and then there's the, the you know the the, the video of uh, a beer bottle or a champagne bottle opening, and then the car gets filled, uh, you know, until it gets yes. full, basically full oh of, my uh, God, of the drink, and and and, 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 the, and the, you know the on top you get the white stuff. I don't remember the the you know when you when you when you serve a beer, you the, get, the foam, yeah, yeah, the foam, thank you. Now that would be uh, oh the the things the things he could do. Please, Iris Singh, make that a thing. We like the shadow maps, but that would just take it to a new level. It's one of the things where you couldn't do it in real life, and I realise it is maybe a simulator. But it's not going to make it any worse, is it? Okay, it might make it significantly worse, but it, it just yeah, give it a try. Give it a try. Well, you could also use it for uh, for good. Uh... In a, in a good way. For example, you could have cars uh, blinking uh, in yellow and black when there's a caution. So everyone knows there's a caution. Yeah. 
you could have the position of the driver on the side of the car. Yeah. You could have it in team racing. The driver name could change on the car to indicate who's driving. That would be uh, another good use. So many, so many possibilities. Um, yeah, if you've got any ideas, let us know in the uh, let us know in the chats. Peter, uh, we are reaching. Thinking... Oh, okay. He crashed uh, not because he crashed, but because he, he disappeared and reappeared. Peter uh, Bingham. Uh, sorry, Bill Switzer's also had a little bit of an yeah, off. Switzer has crashed. Ha. Ah. Still missing his bonnet and going around at the chase. By the way, this fight is getting closer and closer. Wilson and, and Warbing. Of course, of course, Wilson with those super fresh tires. As I think our race leader is about to get... Uh... Oh, got the white flag right now. So, last lap of the race. Yep, he's just started his 43rd lap of this event. These guys still on their 42nd. It's pretty impressive that it is only about half a lap separating uh, first and 10th uh, around a circuit which is uh, notoriously tricky. Uh, everyone's been very competitive. It's been a fantastic Bathurst round of uh, of this championship. Seventh round of season eight of the Race Tech UOV8 Supercar Series. And Wilson finally has caught up. Has he caught up just in time? in order to have an attempt at Richard Warmium. No can do into the oh! chase. Oh, big slide. And is that his opportunity gone? He's still close as Wilson. But he drops to about half a second back. And well, he's going to do some tough work now. I think it's going to be the chase on the last lap. His only opportunity. Warmium perhaps struggling with his tyres a little bit now. These are pretty quick stints, to be fair. For these tyres, only half an hour. They can go 50 minutes, can these tyres. Uh, Get losing about two seconds every 50 minutes, but uh, Wilson not quite close enough. Still um, warming pretty close to Namella as well. He's got to make sure he fades mistake three. We've also got McKnight and Alsop relatively close to one another. Oh, as that's a slow for, oh, slow for Namella and warming. I don't know what he was doing. He's put himself offline, was much later on the brakes, and now having to go defensive into the mountain section. Any opportunity for the team Chimera driver is going for an ambitious move and well, he nearly made it even. Warming him almost lying him alongside but out in the lead, Nick Foggy, the master of Nurburgring as we saw earlier on this season. And he's going to be the master of Bathurst as well. Nick Foggy rounds the final corner and he wins the Enduro at Bathurst in the Race Take UOV8 Supercar Series. Domination from Foggy. Klusterman is going to finish in second place. Good points for him in the championship. And Taliancic is going to be a bit of a spoiler for George McClay. McClay, championship leader, only, only finishing in fourth place. That could be the championship lead gone for him. There is Taliancic. Nice result for him from a little bit further down on the grid. Nice strategy to finish on the podium. McClay in fourth. Brenton, a uh, distant fifth. Looks as though McKnight is going to hang on to sixth. This is the one we need to watch, though. Namella looks to be safe in eighth. He is giving Warringham a slight slipstream, but despite that, Wilson is getting close. He may as well go for it in these last couple of corners. Here he goes to the outside. Oh, as going slow as Namella, who falls behind the pair of them. Maybe fuel issues for Namella, having to really save fuel in these closing stages. Can Warringham hold on against Wilson? Could Wilson gain a couple of places right at the end of this race? Can he get the cut back through the final corner? It's not going to happen. It's a short run to the line. And Richard Warmingham recovers back up to eighth place. But what happened to Namella right at the end of the event? We'll have to get a replay of, uh, of what happened to him going into the chase. He was painfully slow. Let's, let's stay on board with him for basically the, the, the all of the descent. And see and hear if he was saving fuel or not. Might be worth actually riding on board with warming him instead. But so I see kind of the overspeed. I want to hear if he, if he you know, if, if he ran out of fuel or not, as the results pop up on the screen. Uh, you know, but we didn't ask for them. <laughs> Apologies for that. 
Yeah, let, let, let's see if there is a little bit of uh, either sprutzing or, or, or lifting and coasting, as you say, Mark. Oh, what was that? Did he deploy the clutch there? Yeah, it sounded like it, uh, like, like like that. I mean, it sounded like he went for the clutch. Very strange. And then, of course, the run to the line is so short around here. Well, could we ride on board with him here, see if he's coughing and splutzing at the end? Yeah, so he did yeah. run out of fuel, and yeah, he was... Oh, well, maybe... He, he only started coughing and splutzing coming out of the last corner. I wonder, maybe, if he shouldn't have uh, deployed the clutch. Should have just kept his foot down a little bit longer. Who knows? Um, what we do know is Nick Foggy has won this uh, Meeting 7 of the Race Tech UV8 Supercar Series. Uh, beats in Tony Klusterman in second place, 15 seconds, the gap. Nice job, though, from Tony. Really good drive from him. Michael Talientic, uh for Pursuit Sim Racing finishes on the podium. George McClay in fourth. I think Brandon was a long way off in the end. I think probably cruising, to be fair, in that last stint. 45 seconds off his teammate in fifth. Uh, Jay McKnight and Richard Alsop finished within a minute of the race leader. Nice results for those two guys. Uh, Richard Warren was running uh, up in sixth place at, uh, at one point, but uh, they were quite far behind in the end. They were really like, yeah, over 10 seconds behind those drivers in the end uh, was uh, was Warmingham. Distant eight. Um, still got past uh, Nomella, as did Wilson in the low class uh, lap. Steve Lavelli wins the uh, club standings. He was uh, probably beaten on pace by Greg Carr, uh, but the car having issues right at the start of the race in his automobile. Uh, so he finishes in 12. Wayne Sansom, it was in 13th. Then it was uh, Anthony Woodward, Nikolai Bogatyrev. Uh, Clyde Waiting was the first driver one lap down. Jamie Jeffrey and Dominic Sawyer were also one lap down. Two laps down was Peter Bingham. Uh, Tyler Newitz was five laps down. Bill Switzer, I think, retired very late on in the event. And then the other retires were Hal Stedler, Andrew Hoffman, Lena Connor, Sam Buzan, Chris Jackson, Victor Tanaka, and Joshua Chin did not take the start. Those last two, uh, yeah, didn't seem to uh, take to the uh, the racetrack at all. As uh, I think we're about to get some interviews with the drivers. So first up, we are going to talk to Tony Klusterman, uh, who finished in second place today. Tony, congratulations. Really good result, but Nick Cole just seemed that little bit too quick. Yep. Uh, I lost too much in that first stint. I made a couple of mistakes and, and lost about eight seconds, and I was just never able to make it back up. In the last stint there, I was saving a little bit of fuel just in case we went 44 laps, but uh, 43 it was. What would you say was the difference between you and Nicole? And in fact, you and, say, uh, McClare as well, because you were really strong today. Where did you think you were strong around this circuit and where did you think you were lacking a little bit of time? Um, I think on fresh tyres, Nicole, Nicole was uh, just a little bit faster. I saw he banged out a 203.2 and I think the best I could do is a 2.37. So maybe the first few laps right out of the pits or right after the start, he was a little stronger. And uh, then I think it evened up a bit. In terms of the pit stops, was there temptation for you to try to undercut uh, Nicole a little bit, get the fresh tires on sooner because you seem to overcut him instead on, uh, on both pit stops? Yeah, that was done on purpose so I could lead a lap both times and grab a point for each one of those. So uh, I knew if I undercut him, then uh, then I probably wouldn't be able to do that. And next up, we head to Lime Rock Park. What are your thoughts on that one? And what are your thoughts on the Super Sprints? Well, Super Sprints are always exciting. Um, you know, Lime Rock, uh, I think two seasons ago, we had a just an absolutely wonderful Super Sprint uh uh, race there so hopefully we can repeat that absolutely and uh, also kind of what are your aims for the end of the championship i don't believe you've won a round so far this season or did you win at barber perhaps yeah. so, um, second <laughs> second at barber. second so you've got a few second places so far this season do you reckon uh maybe next round could be the time when you uh break that jinx well, it's, you got three chances, so yes, there's always an opportunity. We'll have to see how they go. But, um, you know, it's been a difficult season so far, and uh, it's nice to have a good result. 
Absolutely. Well, congratulations today, Tony. You drove absolutely uh, terrifically. Before we let you go, is there anyone you'd like to thank? Yeah, our team, everybody did a lot of work this week. Uh, Sim Mobility, uh, Race Tech for sponsoring uh, our league, and uh, you guys for doing the broadcast. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for having a chat with us, uh, Tony, and uh, see you in a fortnight's time. Take care. Thank you. So that was uh, Tony Kluseman for Never Quit Racing, uh, finishing in second place today. Uh, Marco, who are you going to have a chat with next? Have a chat with uh, Michael Taliancic, what we are about to bring in our broadcast booth. Hello, Michael. Hey, right, how's it going? Doing fine. How about you? I mean, nice uh, way to have uh, sort of a wild card uh, entry into the into the championship with this race, and certainly you looked like uh, you were uh, uh, very very fast out there. Very nice podium and very good strategy. Yeah, well, my strategy was to just short the fuel at the first stop to jump um, Johnny and George because I thought I had the race pace over them. So I thought if I got ahead of them, I'd pull away. But George was actually really fast. I think he just took too much fuel in the second stop or he would have been all over me. Um what about the the race conditions? I, I, we saw that the track temperature was, uh, was uh, uh, you know, a uh, decently low but more importantly how uh, did, do you feel the car was different today uh, compared to just a few days ago before the new update from a racing well, i did no prior practice at bathurst but i was genuinely surprised at how well the tires held on like from the start of my stint to the end of my stint there was only like three or four attempts between my better laps so i was quite surprised but i seemed to be a bit slow on my colder tyres than the guys around me and a bit faster on the older tyres. So I'm not sure if that's a setup thing or a driver thing. Well, Michael, it has been absolutely fantastic to have you back. Hopefully you will join us uh, in the future for another uh, appearance here and there. We know it's very, very late uh, uh, down there uh, right now. So thanks a lot for, uh, for joining us. Before we let you go, anyone you'd like to thank? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to thank Track Racer and MXTV. They've been with us for quite a while now on my team, and um, Six Gear Imagery, who's been doing some photos for the team. Also, like to thank you guys for doing the broadcast, and Clyde and that, and whoever helps him with running everything in the background. Awesome, Michael. Thank you very much, and uh, hopefully we'll catch you very soon. Thank you. Have a good night. So our third interview, I reckon, is going to be with uh, Marco Namella. He finished in 10th place today. Marco, oh, fuel, 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 fuel. What happened? Yeah, I think I, I got damage on early on my uh, last stint, and that used more fuel. And yeah, it was only half a liter I had to save. But uh, I didn't save enough from the previous lap, and when I noticed, I have uh, too little fuel. Yeah, that was tough. Yeah, it was still... really... yeah, really unlucky right at the uh, right at the end. But apart from that, it, it looked like a fun race. All you guys in the middle was was so close. We also saw you go side by side with your teammate uh, Richard Alsop at one point, and. Uh, nearly went into the wall that must have been a bit of a nervy moment yeah we had a, a zero x there and uh, yeah um, i think i touched the wall even a little bit but yeah it was a uh, just tight racing yeah absolutely and and how much do you enjoy the circuit do, do you kind of relish the the uh the the danger of this place or are you a little bit uh, a little bit cautious whenever you visit this circuit uh, that this was actually my first race here. <laughs> oh so, wow! Yeah, I had to learn the track in a week. So, yeah. Well, certainly was uh, extremely impressive, Marco. And next up, we head to Lime Rock Park. Do you have much experience around that place? Uh, when I drove the Rookie <laughs> MX5, that's my last uh, experience on the track. 
Well, I'm sure you're going to do uh, very well next week, uh, or in two weeks' time. Uh, Marco, before we let you go, is there uh, anyone you'd like to thank? Uh, you guys, Racetech, and uh, uh, Richard for good good uh, position and uh, my team. Well, thanks for having a chat with us, Marco, and we'll see you uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Okay, thanks. So that was uh, Marco Nomella finishing in 10th place today and i think that pretty much rounds off our uh interviews no no xbr drivers it's a bit of shame it would have been good to have a chat with uh, nicole in particular but uh maybe next week we will uh we'll speak to him but uh now this championship marco it's uh tossing up a lot george mcclay with the momentum in the first couple of rounds that suzuka round he massively outscored uh nicole foggy with a couple of race wins and of course, uh, as well, the, uh, the I think the round after that as well, uh, McClay got another race win. However, the last three or four meetings, that gap has been tapping down ever so slightly. And we kind of go into the last few rounds of this season with them pretty much dead level. I think uh, McClay's got a small advantage without the job scores, but then Foggy's ahead with the job scores. So it's, it's going to be really, really tantalizing to see who comes out on top. Absolutely, and of course, you know, in the super sprint round, anything can happen and probably will. So, uh, don't uh, you know, don't miss it in two weeks' time. And also, Sam, let me remind to the viewers so we have uh, basically a full I mean, we started already with a lot of broadcast today, but we have more coming at 22 GMT. The Formula 3.5 will be uh, back uh, on Apex Racing TV, then at uh, 120 GMT, the DCRA Championship round 4 out of 5 will be running at Sebring. Tomorrow morning, Oz Aussie Mixed and Fixed 1045 GMT. In the afternoon, 12 GMT for the FX Virtual Series from Monza. And at 16 GMT, Adrenaline Karting Invitational, the Stay at Home 1 hour of Lime Rock Park. A lot to look forward to. Thank you very much, Sam. Thank you to all the viewers. And, uh, well, hopefully you will stay with us uh, later in the day as well and also into the night. Yeah, there's loads of stuff on Apex Racing TV at the moment. Lots of different categories as well, which is fantastic. See if you might well see a few real-life drivers as well uh, nipping about. So uh, certainly to tune into all of that. Uh, we've also got, uh, well, World GT will be on Monday. Uh, we've also got Sim Racers World on Wednesday. AOSC will be back as well on Friday morning. So check out that one. And ARLT, oh no, ARLTC is on very quick. Um, anyway, keep subscribed to Apex Racing TV and the eSports Network as well. And you can watch all our broadcasts, which will be absolutely terrific points. Uh, but for now, for me and for Mark, we're going to say goodbye. And we'll see you next time.